In this lesson, we'll conclude our review of Writing Test 7, Section 2. We're on the fourth and final passage, Was the Hoax a Hoax? Question 40. Proof of ulterior motives is scarce, consequently weakening Pooley and Sokolov's argument. Remember in the previous video, they wrote this article and they theorized that the newspaper industry is trying to discredit the uh, newly emerging technology of radio. And so let's look at question 40. We want to establish the main idea of the paragraph. So we have to kind of read further before we can answer this. For instance, the C.E. Hooper ratings indicate that a mere 2% of households had tuned into the broadcast. Pooley and Sokol also call into question the validity of the off-sided report that was based on a survey conducted six weeks after the broadcast. Just because some people found the broadcast unsettling, the authors contend, doesn't mean they believed it and reacted with terror. According to this report, one million people indicated they had been frightened by the broadcast. Ratings, however, real that far fewer people than a million had listened to the broadcast. And so I would just focus at least on those first few sentences. For instance, the ratings indicate that a mere 2%. So it definitely wasn't as much as initially reported. They also call into the, the question the validity of this report that was based six weeks after. And so does that weaken their argument? Really the main point is that the evidence of this, this panic had been overblown because just a very small percentage of people and uh, ratings however real that far fewer than a million people had listened to it. And so here, the main theme is not weakening their argument, but evidence suggests that the reports of panic have been overblown or exaggerated. So 40 is B. All right, let's take a look at 41. Ratings, however, reveal that far fewer than a million people had listened to the broadcast. And this is an idiomatic one, far fewer than a million people. And then you see much fewer, much less than. This doesn't get tested that much, but the difference between fewer and less. Use fewer if you can quantify it. Use less if it's general. And so what if you said there were fewer than 10 students in the lecture? That would be correct because you can actually quantify the number of students. But if you said I need to drink less coffee, you can't really quantify it. It's in general terms. You would use less. And so that's the difference. And so we're talking about numbers we can quantify we definitely need fewer so we have far fewer or much fewer and then then is wrong too because it's not then with an e it's than and so there's a couple ways to find this but this one is a it's no change and we just got a couple more all right so had listened to the broadcast Furthermore, Pooley and Sokolow note that this survey conflated being frightened, disturbed, or excited by the program with being panicked. And now we've got the question about sentence order. Remember, we saw the brackets here. So we want to make sentence four the most logical. Where should it be placed? So let's take a look at sentence four again. Sentence four, just because some people found the broadcast unsettling, the authors contend, doesn't mean they believed and reacted with real terror. And so this is another evidence-based question. Whenever you're placing something like this, there has to be some evidence in the previous sentence about them being unsettled. And it really didn't fit. That's why I think it made that question about the main theme a little harder, because this was sort of out of order. But this was talking about a survey conducted six weeks. It doesn't really follow. You need some evidence that people were unsettled, and then you put that sentence. And if you look, it's really, if you look here at seven, furthermore, Pooley and Sokolow know that this survey conflated. Conflated means combined or um, put together being frightened, disturbed, or excited by the program with being panicked. This is evidence of being unsettled. So whenever you see that, you should say to yourself, I know it has to belong after that. And so right after this, you would put, just because some of who found the broadcast unsettling, the authors contend doesn't mean they believed it and reacted with real terror. And so this is how you do these questions. You look for the evidence. So it's after seven. And I've got two more. Let's take a look at... 43. Pooley and Sokolow describe a more likely scenario. Most people who had heard the broadcast understood they were listening to a piece of fiction, but some being influenced by the sensationalized news coverage afterward later remembered being more afraid than they had been. So this is really just um, correct word usage. 
they heard the broadcast and understood they were listening to a piece of fiction, but some being. Now, being is really the worst passive voice. We don't need it, and it's almost always wrong. Why do you need the being at all? But some, right, just but some, influenced by the sensationalized news coverage. And so that's all you need. You certainly don't need the, the being, but some, comma, and then you have influence. And so the answer there is C, and we've got one last question, number 44. The researchers also suggest that not unlike people who got caught up in the excitement of the story when reading about it in the newspaper, the American public may have been willing to embrace the legend because of its, more, of its appeal to the imagination. So here, this is a, a, a long non-essential clause, suggests that not unlike people who got caught up in the excitement of the story when reading about it in the newspaper. So not unlike, and even though this is a double negative not unlike, this really is saying similar to people. And this is correct. This is an idiomatic phrase. Not unlike is really the same as similar. It's not unlike. It's not like. It's not not like. It's not different from. It's really similar. This is an analogy. Not unlike people who got caught up in the excitement when reading about it. The American public may have been willing to embrace the legend because of its appeal to the imagination. So this another tricky idiomatic one. It is correct as is, and the answer is A.